I'm kind of enjoying this trip actually. We're a whole bunch of people taken up to the mud volcano. We're surprised because we had no expectations coming here. We're Marlin and Alex and in 2017 we came up with the crazy idea to hitchhike all the way from Thailand to Spain. This is our story. Good morning, buenos dias, comoron. We are going on a boat today. Hopefully I won't get seasick. Yeah, so we're off. I'm gonna go and get a taxi, pay for a transport. Can you believe it? No, I can't. After nine days of hitchhiking nearly 4,000 kilometers across Kazakhstan, it was time to cross the Caspian Sea to our next destination, Azerbaijan. We didn't attempt to get a free boat ride. It seemed way too complicated. Instead, we paid $80 each and were told to be at the port at 8 a.m. on the day of departure, where we were in for a very long wait. We didn't board the boat until 4.30 in the afternoon. We got a cabin which we shared with two motorcyclists, Michael and Kate, and then we had to wait again. So we're on the boat, quite many foreigners, passengers, with all sorts of different vehicles, hitchhikers passengers, train bus passengers also. Uh, anyway, here we are. Probably have to wait for quite a few hours before we're, before we're off. We had dinner with some fellow travelers and then we all went up to the top deck together to watch the sunset. The boat had still not left the port. At midnight the boat finally left the port. We went to bed and the next morning we woke up to a beautiful flat sea. We had heard very mixed reviews about this boat ride, but we were actually happily surprised. Thanks to excellent weather, calm seas and beautiful company, we really enjoyed this ride. Day two? No, it's not really day two, we got on last night, as I said, uh, yesterday. And now it's late afternoon, day after, nice weather, no waves, nice and smooth. And apparently we're going to arrive maybe at about 11 p.m. Uh, we hope that we don't have to get off the boat then, but instead stay and sleep on the boat and get off early in the morning. It would be much better than having to camp in the port. So we'll see what happens. And I'm kind of enjoying this trip actually. It's a nice boat trip. Good company, a bunch of people. We spent the rest of the day enjoying the fantastic views of the Caspian Sea and then it was time for another spectacular sunset. We arrived in Azerbaijan around 2 a.m. in the morning. It had been 40 hours since we arrived at the port a couple of mornings earlier. And guys, the journey did not end here. Okay, we are in Azerbaijan. We had an interesting night. Uh, we had to get off the boat like two in the morning, three in the morning. I don't know. It took ages for the passports as well. Uh, we're a whole bunch of people who were supposed to camp together. Now it's too late. It's too late. The sunrise, but we've been uh, taken up to the the Giza mm, mud mud volcano. Yeah, because one of uh, a family who were on the boat, they have a van and they took us out of the port. And it was very bumpy. Very bumpy, but it's nice. Yeah. It's very nice. We have no idea what we're doing for the rest of the day, but... Yeah. Sunrise is looking very nice. Anyway, yeah. speak to you later. 
We had no idea how Baku in Azerbaijan is home to the world's greatest concentration of mud volcanoes. The country is thought to have nearly 400 of them, which are shooting small perpetual flames into the air regularly. This phenomena is what has given Azerbaijan the nickname Land of Fire. We've got a first ride in Azerbaijan and we're going into Baku. We've had breakfast with our travel companions from the boats at a petrol station. And now we're in a car. Ride number two today. I think we went like halfway to Baku with the other car. And this one is going in our direction. Very tired but incredibly grateful for our beautiful experience at the mud volcanoes, we arrived in the super modern city of Baku. Hey, we hey. are in the most modern city we've been in our trip so far. It's Baku! Yeah, actually. In Azerbaijan. Some really cool architectural buildings. We're like in the fancy neighborhood now. We're in Port Baku residence and it's just like only big fancy brands everywhere like Mulberry and Armani and stuff like that. Not really our deal but hey. apparently our couch surfing host lives here somewhere. Okay we are at Oscar's place. He's our couch surfing host. He's from Colombia living in Azerbaijan, Baku. He's got a big party going on at the moment. Those people we mingled a bit but we don't really know anyone so we're just kind of going to take a back seat. Yeah, we, are, we haven't slept. We are destroyed. Completely. But uh, keeping up appearances. <laughs> but now I can't anymore, so goodbye. We slept like babies that night, and the coming days we mostly took it easy, but we did go out and explore a little bit. Good afternoon! So this is day three in Baku. We're going to spend a third night here. We extended our stay in Baku for different reasons. One, the first day we spent here we hadn't slept and we didn't go out. We were in a flat all day and joined the party as well all day, yeah. all night. Yesterday we were outside here, it was nice. We the old city, but yeah. pleasant. Baku is truly a city of contrasts. It's surrounded by modern skyscrapers and fancy shopping malls, but in the middle of everything you have the old town, the walled city, which is full of cats. We have found our favorite city so far in uh, Central Asia and Asia, Southeast Asia. Uh, Bangkok is big, there's lots of stuff to do, but it's very dirty. But this city is very nice, all the old buildings have been renovated, lots of new buildings. Everyone's really friendly. Yeah, it's a nice feeling. We like it. Important to say that we're surprised because we had no expectations coming here. It's a positive surprise. Baku's old city is one of the country's most important historical places. You'll find grand palaces and mosques as well as ruins of old hammams and caravanserais side by side with fancy restaurants and art galleries. It's an impressive part of the city. Today we've been, uh, or I've been editing last night and today I went shopping done some research uh, I think we've changed our travel plans we were supposed to hitchhike straight to the border and to Tbilisi which is the capital in Georgia but now we think we're gonna go towards towards Sheki and which is here to, in Azerbaijan up to the northeast border with Georgia no. and on the way to Sheki I think we will camp one night the only thing is, we don't have a couch surfing host in Sheki. Yet. So we'll see what we do. We're out now, it's bloody hot. We're just gonna go for a walk. Yeah. Did enough sightseeing yesterday. Then after that, we're uh, gonna go back home, edit, chill. And tonight we're gonna go and watch the flame towers. Flame towers. Baku is not only the capital of Azerbaijan, it's also the largest city on the Caspian Sea and in the Caucasus region. It's sometimes called the City of Winds and this is because of the cool winds from the Caspian Sea. It's got a beautiful promenade stretching kilometers along the big saltwater lake and in the summer this area fills up with people enjoying the cooler nights. Alright, so last night in Baku, we're off to camp tomorrow. Huh? It's really nice! 
it's really nice there are lots of people this walk promenade by the water is many kilometers long light shows amusement parks lots of people cafes bars probably very expensive but it's nice just to walk here as well yeah nice place pleasantly surprised yeah so go here the most famous landmark in Baku is definitely the flame towers. These three towers were designed to look like flames and every night they light up in a beautiful light show. This is definitely a city worth visiting. And this guys is where this episode ends. Join us next time as we hitchhike more than halfway through Azerbaijan towards the country of Georgia. Camp with cows and sheep and continue our epic journey towards Europe. So we had free lunch and we got free ice cream with our ride. And they'd been killed and then uh, they were skinning it and taking all the intestines out and everything. And there were these two army guys, they asked for a passport and then they told us we can't go there. Guys, if you have made it to the end of this video, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and drop us a comment below. And we will see you in the next one. And a special thanks to all of our patrons for keeping us motivated and helping us stay on the road. If you too want to become a patron, head over to our page. You will find the link at the end of this video and down in the description below.